Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the Russian economy, and specifically to talk about yet another round of conscription that's been announced by President Putin. On the 30th of September, it was announced that a further 133,000 men aged between 18 and 30 will be conscripted into the Russian army before the end of December. And this is actually the sixth round of conscription that's been announced since the invasion of Ukraine. And the running total is now close to 1 million people. And these are people who were not previously part of the armed forces. These are men who are working in the Russian economy, who are now being taken out of their employment and being sent to become soldiers. So this is having a massive impact on the Russian economy. And if you've been following the channel, you'll know that Russia is already running short of people. It simply doesn't have enough workers to fill all of the vacancies. And what that's doing is driving up wages, which is driving up inflation, which is driving up interest rates and destroying the Russian economy. So in today's episode, we'll talk about exactly what's going on with conscription. We'll have a look at those six different rounds of conscription. And one of them includes the mobilization that was announced at the end of 2022, which caused a mass exodus of people. We'll talk about what the estimated casualty rate is for Russia for the war in Ukraine, because the leader of the Ukraine armed forces came out recently and said that he believes that over 650,000 Russians have been killed in the war so far. So we'll take a look at those stats and we'll also have a look at all of the military equipment that Russia has been losing and try to have a look at what the cost of that is, because the cost of all of this is becoming astronomical from Russia's perspective. And if you follow the channel, you'll know that I've recently been talking about the fact that the budget for 2025 includes 40% to go on defence. So Russia is now devoting the vast majority of its expenditure more than on any other part of the economy on the war in Ukraine. And that's obviously having a detrimental impact on the Russian economy. We'll talk about what the implications of this latest conscription will be in terms of the potential additional loss of people, people who don't want to hang around and be told that they've got to go and fight in Ukraine. We'll have a look at what's going on with the workforce and wages and inflation. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the implications of this latest announcement will be and what's likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's supporting the channel. I know I've said this before, but I genuinely mean it. And I want to make sure that everyone that's supporting me knows that I really appreciate it. So if you're a long-term supporter, either through Patreon, where you can get early access to these videos and watch them advert free, or YouTube membership, where you'll also get early access or buy me a coffee membership. Thank you so much for that support. Really does help to keep me going. And if you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks recently, I really appreciate the time and the effort and the generosity involved in that. On the 30th of September 2024, this notification was published in the Russian state-run newspaper Rosiskia Gazeta, announcing that Russia is now carrying out the draft of citizens aged between 18 and 30 who are not in the reserve and are subject to conscription in accordance with the federal law in the amount of 133,000 people. And as I said at the start of today's video, this is the sixth conscription announcement that Russia has declared since the start of the war in Ukraine in February 2022. On the 31st of March 2022, so five weeks after the war in Ukraine started, Russia conscripted 134,500 men. Six months later, on the 21st of September 2022, President Putin announced that 300,000 men were going to be recruited via a mobilization. And this was the first mobilization that Russia had announced since World War II. A further six months later, on the 30th of March 2023, President Putin issued another decree drafting a further 147,000 people into the Russian military. On the 30th of September 2023, a further 130,000 people were conscripted into the military via another decree issued by President Putin. At the end of March 2024, another 150,000 were recruited into the military. All of which means that since the start of the war in Ukraine, Russia has conscripted 994,500 men 
into the army. And as I said right at the start of today's video, conscription isn't the same as recruiting people through advertising campaigns. Conscription is basically you're issued with papers and told that you've got to go and join the army. So all of these people are currently doing something else. They are working in the Russian economy. So what Russia has done over the course of the last two and a half years is remove almost one million people from its workforce. And these people are aged between 18 and 30. So they are the new blood. They are the recruits in industry and business that will be leading Russia over the course of the next 20 or 30 years. So taking out this big chunk of the workforce is really detrimental from Russia's point of view because people in their 20s generally are very productive. They've got lots of energy. They're very motivated. They want to learn. They want to get on. They want to be promoted. So they can be a really good part of your workforce. So taking out a million people from Russia's total population of only 144 million is a big chunk. But the situation in Russia is actually worse than it is for most countries due to the shape of its population pyramid. This chart shows Russia's population pyramid. And if you follow the channel, you'll be very familiar with these graphs. But if this is the first time that you're seeing one, what this is, is a breakdown of the current population of Russia by age groups. We've got five year age brackets here from zero to four at the bottom to 100 plus at the top. The blue section on the left shows the number of males in each of those categories and the red section on the right shows the number of females. Now, the reason that these charts are called population pyramids is that traditionally, if you have a country that is growing, this chart will be pyramid shaped. So the largest percentage of the population will be the youngest people and the smallest percentage will be the oldest people. So you'd have a nice sort of triangular position here. However, as you can see from the shape of this chart, Russia does not have a pyramidical population. And in fact, because of the falling birth rate and also losses through some of the wars that Russia has been involved in over the course of the last 30 years, Russia actually has a tapering pyramid. The number of people in the younger age categories is significantly lower than it is in the older categories. And if we focus in on the age range that is now being conscripted, which is between 18 and 30, you can see that this age range is actually some of the lowest percentages of the total population out of all of the different ages. The 15 to 19 year age category represents 2.8% of Russia's population. The 20 to 24 age bracket represents 2.6% and 25 to 29 is also 2.6%. So in total, these three age ranges only constitute 8% of Russia's total population. Now to put that into perspective, this chart shows the population pyramid for the USA. And as you can see, we've got a very different shape here. The US is a developed and mature economy. So broadly speaking, we've got a similar number of people in each of the age categories, up to around 65. There's around 3%-ish in each of those categories. And if we have a look at the three age ranges that we've just looked at for Russia, those that are being subject to conscription, 15 to 19 year olds represent 3.4% of the population compared to 2.8% for Russia. 20 to 24 year olds also represent 3.4% compared to 2.6% for Russia and 25 to 29 year olds represent 3.3% compared with 2.6% for Russia. So what the Russian pyramid shows us is that there is a significant shortage of young people in Russia at the moment. And as more are conscripted and sent to fight in Ukraine, it's likely that those numbers will continue diminishing. And in addition to that, there's also a high likelihood that a lot of the other people who are still remaining in the workforce may decide that they don't want to hang around to be conscripted and they want to leave Russia permanently. So as you've just seen, Russia currently has a major shortage of people in their 20s, which is partly driven by these conscriptions. Every single time that Russia announces one of these conscriptions, every six months, another 150,000 people are taken out of the workforce. But actually, the situation is much worse than that, because all the people who are left behind in their 20s who are eligible to be called up are now panicking that they're going to be next on that list. And back in September 2022, when the first mobilization since World War II was announced by Russia, 300,000 people were needed to bolster the efforts in Ukraine. That resulted in a mass exodus. Around 700,000 people decided that enough was enough and they wanted to leave the country. And that 700,000 was actually on top 
of the 500,000 that left immediately following the invasion of Ukraine back in February 2022. So during 2022, Russia lost over 1.2 million people from its workforce. And a big chunk of those people were guys in their 20s who were worried about being called up. And this latest announcement is going to cause further panic because we've got a diminishing pool of people that Russia can dip into here. In July 2023, they actually increased the age of conscription. Before that, it was 18 to 27 year olds. But because that pool was running short, they increased the age to 30. So there is a possibility that that age could be increased further. We might see it go up to 32 or 35 as Russia continues to run short of people. And that sort of thought process continues to send panic to people in the older age categories. So just because you're 31 years old doesn't mean that you're going to be exempt from conscription because all it takes is for a new decree to be issued to change the age range and all of a sudden you could be sent over to Ukraine. So all of this is really destabilizing the workforce in Russia right now and is causing a shortage of people. In terms of the workforce, there's a really interesting dynamic going on in Russia right now because if you follow the channel, you'll be aware that Russia has converted itself to what's called a wartime economy. Lots of different industries and businesses in Russia have been recruited by the Kremlin to help with the effort in Ukraine. So they're producing things that are needed for the military effort. And those companies are having a heyday. They're having a great time because they're getting paid directly from the state and they're being given guaranteed orders. So those businesses have been busily recruiting all across Russia over the past 12 months or so. And they've been driving up wages and there is now a shortage of people as a result of the fact that these companies have been recruiting heavily and also we've lost over a million people from the workforce as a result of the exodus and also a further million that have gone to fight in Ukraine. This chart shows the unemployment rate in Russia over the past 10 years. And the reason that I wanted to go back 10 years is really to look at what the normalized level of unemployment was in Russia before the war in Ukraine started. 10 years ago, in August 2014, the unemployment rate in Russia was 4.8%. And that actually increased to 5.8% by the start of 2015 as a result of issues in the Russian economy partly caused by the annexation of Crimea, which resulted in sanctions being applied against Russia. Now, over the following four and a half years, the unemployment rate did reduce slightly and came down to 4.3% in August 2019. And if you look at the average level of unemployment in that five-year period, it was around 5%. So that was really a normalized level from Russia's perspective. Now, as with most countries, there was a jump in unemployment during the COVID-19 pandemic when a lot of businesses closed, and it hit a high of 6.3% in July 2020. However, by January 2022, which was the month before the invasion of Ukraine started, it had returned to a more normalized level of 4.4%. However, if you look at what's happened over the last two and a half years, there has been a significant reduction in the unemployment rate. And the most recent figures that we have for July 2024 show that unemployment is currently running at 2.4% in Russia. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, surely a low rate of unemployment is actually a good indicator for an economy. It tells us that everybody's got a job. And that would be the situation if there were lots of job seekers, if there were lots of people who were desperate to find work. But Russia's actually struggling from the opposite end of the spectrum. There are lots of jobs available. There just aren't enough people to fill them. And so the unemployment rate being at 2.4% tells us that there just simply aren't enough workers in Russia right now. And that's going to hold back all of those companies that are short of people. That means that their productivity will be lower, so will their profitability, and all of this will result in the Russian economy growing at a slower rate and potentially could go into some sort of slowdown if these companies continue to struggle to find enough people to actually do what they need to do. One of the major consequences of the shortfall in the workforce in Russia is that wages have been growing at a rapid rate over the course of the past 12 months or so. And that increase in wages is now driving inflation. This chart shows the year-on-year -year increase in real wages in Russia over the past 12 months. And real wage growth shows the increase in wages over and above 
the increase in inflation. This is on top of inflation. And one thing to note about this chart is that the scale on the right hand side does not start at zero. It actually starts at 5% and goes up to 14%. And what this chart shows is that on a 12 month rolling basis, the increase in real wages in Russia has been above 6% in every single one of the last 12 months. And the most recent figures for June 2024 show that real wages increased by 6.2%. So when you add that figure to the actual inflation of 8.6% seen in Russia in June, that means that the year-on-year -year increase in wages was around 14.8%. Now that is clearly a very high rate of growth and is significantly above the level of inflation. And the implications of that is that we now have a wage spiral in Russia. People are being paid more, therefore they've got more cash, they're spending more, demand is going up. And when demand goes up and you have a limited amount of supply, that drives up prices. And if you look at what's happened to inflation over the past two months, it's hit 9.1% in both months, which is significantly above the target level of 4% set by the Russian Central Bank. And the problem that Russia has is that with further conscription announcements, more people are going to be taken out of the workforce. That means there's be even less people to fill all of those jobs. Therefore, companies will have to offer higher wages. Therefore, real wage growth will continue increasing, as will inflation. And this is becoming a really difficult, vicious circle for Russia to break. According to a recent announcement by the General Staff of Ukraine's Armed Forces, Russia, as of the 29th of September had lost 651,810 men in the war in Ukraine. In addition to the loss of people, it was also reported that Russia have so far lost 8,833 tanks, 17,547 armoured fighting vehicles, 18,855 artillery systems, 1,204 multiple launch rocket systems, 963 anti-aircraft weapons, 369 planes, 328 helicopters, 16,322 drones, 2,613 cruise missiles, 28 ships, one submarine, 25,621 cars, and 3,314 specialist military equipment. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think the news that Russia is continuing to conscript people from its workforce to go and fight in Ukraine is really bad news for the Russian economy. The Russian economy is already struggling in terms of it doesn't have enough people. There are job vacancies all over Russia and wages are currently spiraling. So taking out another 133,000 people at this point in time is an absolute disaster. And those people are very productive. We're talking about 18 to 30 year olds. So these aren't just juniors that are straight out of college. You've got people in their late 20s here who will be adding lots of value to the Russian economy, particularly because they're already short of people. So you need your good people to be doing their very best, to be producing enough to keep all of those other vacant jobs covered. So taking another 133,000 out is crazy, but unfortunately, from Russia's point of view, it isn't just going to be 133,000 because anybody that doesn't get conscripted right now is likely to be panicking and think, I need to leave the country. Because if you're an 18 to 30 year old currently sitting in a job in Russia, you could very well be next on that list. And the last thing that anybody wants to do right now is go and fight in Ukraine. Because as we've just discussed, it's reported that over 650,000 Russians have been killed so far. Now, I don't have any verification of that number. I just wanted to share it with you because it was recently announced by Ukraine. But whatever the figure is, it is definitely in the hundreds of thousands. So people who are going over and fighting in Ukraine, there is a real chance that you could either get injured or killed because this is active warfare. Russia does have a compulsory military service process, which is similar to a lot of other countries around the world who do still have compulsory service. But for most of those nations, people are happy to go and do their bit because you generally go and get some training. You might go on a posting overseas and it can be quite good fun. You might just be doing some things that are helping to secure peace somewhere. And overall, most people are happy to do their bit. But when there's an active war going on and there is a real chance that you could actually be killed, I don't think people are as keen to
to go and do that sort of military service. It isn't quite the same as just going and helping people in a famine area. This is going to a war, a battlefield, where people will be shooting at you and sending missiles, and, and it would just be absolutely terrifying if that isn't your vocation in life. So I think the latest announcement of another 130,000 people, which is the sixth announcement that has been made since the start of the war in Ukraine, we're now up to almost 1 million people have been conscripted. These are people that had jobs. They weren't wanting to be in the military. They got forced to go and do it. So the latest announcement is likely to send further shockwaves through the Russian workforce. We may well see another exodus of people. It could be hundreds of thousands of people deciding to leave Russia. And as we saw from their population pyramid, Russia is already chronically short of people in their 20s. And this is the lifeblood of the future economy because over the next 20 to 30 years, those people will become more senior, they take over control of the businesses, and they are the captains of industry for the future. But as we saw, Russia doesn't have enough of those to be able to cover all of those jobs. And actually, the Russian population is now becoming top heavy. And that throws into question another issue with regards to pensions and how the state is actually going to be able to fund itself in the long term if it doesn't have enough young people to be able to keep filling all the jobs in the workforce. And as we also saw, what's happening in the workforce is that wages are now spiraling. They're going up rapidly. They're out of control. That's forcing up inflation. Inflation is forcing up interest rates. Higher interest rates are bad news for the economy because any companies or people that need to borrow will have to pay very high rates to do that. And so all of this is creating a major problem for the Russian economy. And the longer that Russia continues with this conscription policy, the worse it's going to be for the economy. And of course, the fundamental issue here is that the war in Ukraine is continuing. Russia needs to keep feeding it with more and more people. Those people are being taken out of the Russian workforce. Russia currently isn't able to recruit lots of migrants from surrounding countries because they're all worried that they might get conscripted as well. So the overall summary of today's video is that the latest announcement of another 133,000 people being taken out of the workforce to go and fight in Ukraine or join the armed forces is seriously bad news for the Russian economy. There will be knock-on implications of this announcement. It's likely that more people will leave Russia. That means that the workforce is getting even smaller at a time when they're already struggling to fill all of the job vacancies. That is driving up wages, which is driving up inflation, which is driving up interest rates. And all of this is seriously bad news for the Russian economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it useful, informative, and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.